Sometimes the wood you have available is not long enough for the part that you will want to make. Or perhaps you need a curved piece of wood, but you only have straight boards available. Both of these are the case for me now that I'm making the garboard planks for the fiddlehead canoe. So to get the length and the curve that I want, I'm going to scarf two planks together. First I'm placing my boards on the bench, one on top of the other. Then I'm placing my plank pattern on top of that. I'm trying to figure out how to align the wood to avoid the splits at the ends of the planks, avoid the sap wood on the back side of the plank, and to get the grain to run as straight as possible along the pattern. In this case, I want the scarf joint to be right at the midframe. This will allow the grain to follow the pattern nicely and it will allow me to steam the ends of the planks without compromising the glued scarf joint. So I've drawn a line at the midframe mark and now I'm measuring out 12 centimeters from that line to give me the extra wood I will need for the scarf joint. The math of it is like this. I want to plane a 12 to 1 slope on my scarf because this will create a joint that is as strong and flexible as the rest of the plank. The plank is around 2 cm thick, so the total length of the scarf will be 24 cm, 12 cm on each side of the midframe mark. Then I'm cutting to this line. Note that this cut is not at 90 degrees to the edge of the plank. It's at a bit of an angle as defined by the cardboard strip at the midframe mark on the plank pattern. Then I'm putting the pattern back on top of the boards. Once I'm satisfied that the shape of the planks matches the pattern, I'm drawing a line along the edge that I just cut off. Then I'm measuring 24 centimeters away from that line to get the length of the scarf joint, and then I cut to this line. Again, I'm replacing my pattern just to make a final check that everything looks okay. With the pattern in place, I'm making rough marks with a piece of chalk to guide me in cutting off the bulk of the waste before making the actual scarf joint. This will save me a bit of sweat when I'm moving the planks and when I'm planing the joint. I'm also making a mark on both planks that will help me get the correct alignment before cutting the scarf. and I'm marking the surfaces that will need to be planed to produce the scarf joint. It's very easy to mix up once uh, the planks are flipped around. Now I've cut off the waste outside the chalk lines and I've also cut off the ends with the splits. My next job is to align the two planks so that the 24 cm line on the lower plank matches the edge of the upper plank. I'm also aligning the center mark. This mark will disappear once I'm done planing. So to make alignment during the glue up easier, I'm making new alignment marks along the edges of the upper plank. Now the planing can begin. I've aligned the leading edge of the lower plank with the edge of my workbench. This will allow me to plane the plank all the way down to a feather edge while the wood remains supported. I've secured the planks to the bench with a couple of clamps. To begin with, I'm using my scrub plane to knock off the corners of the planks. A scrub plane has a blade that is ground to a curve and it has a large mouth opening. The scrub plane is the old world alternative to a handheld power planer. If you do have a handheld power planer though, it will work very well for this job. You'll perhaps get the job done a little bit quicker. But a well-tuned scrub plane is actually quite enjoyable to use. And cutting one of these scarf joints with hand tools will probably give you about as much cardiovascular exercise as a good jog around the neighborhood.
As you can see, I'm planing directly across the grain. This is the most efficient way of removing large amounts of wood. It leaves a very rough surface and the edges may chip off a bit, but it doesn't matter because it will all be refined later anyway. By the way, you definitely don't need a scrub plane to do this job. It can be cut with a block plane or any other hand plane. But in that case, perhaps the initial wood removal will take you just a little bit longer. Once I'm getting closer to the cut lines, I'm beginning to take diagonal passes with my plane. This will help flatten the joint. Remember, the plane only cuts the high spots. So if there's a low area in your joint with higher areas around it, the plane will ride the highs and leave the lows untouched. Now that I'm getting closer to the end goal, feather edge on each board, I'm switching to my jointer plane. Again, it's not necessary to use a jointer plane to cut scarf joints. It can be done with any type of plane. But if you have one, this would be a good time to use it. Because the jointer is so long, it makes it very easy to knock off all the high spots so that the joint becomes perfectly flat. I'm cutting both diagonally and along the grain here to get rid of any unevenness. Once I've created a feather edge on both boards and I've reached the two pencil lines, the joint is done. But in this case, actually, I'm planing a little bit past the pencil line on the upper board. This is because it turns out the upper board is just a little bit thicker than the lower one. So to get the same angle all the way across the joint, one of the ramps must be a bit longer. Okay, now it's time to take the planks back to the long workbench and try them with the pattern again. I want a good alignment of the joint and I want, of course, to make sure that the plank shape matches the pattern nicely. Here you can see how the scarf joint on the upper plank is a bit longer than the one on the lower plank. I'm trying to get the joint perfectly flat towards the bench top, leaving the extra wood at the top. Once the glue has cured, I'll plane off the excess wood from the upper plank. To make sure that I'll position the planks correctly during glue up, I'm marking the ends and the edges of the planks with blue masking tape. Then I'm applying the glue. I'm using polyurethane, but epoxy would work very well too, especially if you're not sure your joint is 100% flat. This glue is very slippery, so to keep the planks from sliding apart, I'm securing them with a few clamps. Then I'm clamping up the joint, using a few blocks of wood to make sure the pressure is evenly distributed. Polyurethane glue likes high clamping pressure, but if you're using epoxy, the clamping pressure should be relatively light, just enough so that there is thickened epoxy squeezing out at all edges of the joint. Next day the glue is dry and I'm giving the plank a few passes through the thickness plane. To make sure the wood at the scarf joint is not torn out, I'm putting the plank into the machine with a feather edge pointing towards me. In that way the machine will cut away from this edge, eliminating the risk of any disasters. <laughs> 